great everyone to be here with you. I know we have listeners in from around the world. Today we were talking about authenticity and what it means to be an authentic leader. Our hope is, is that you'll leave this webinar today with a greater understanding of what it means to be an authentic leader and receive some tips on how to become a more authentic leader. Perhaps you will discover ways to stay also true to your authentic self, your spirit, and your character despite the peer pressures around you. And we believe at Blue Point that we have a model that can help give you a framework to think about, um, think about becoming a more authentic leader. Uh, because authenticity can be very difficult to, to define. Now, it's easy to define an authentic certified diamond for example. We have a clear definition of what it means to be uh, authentic when it comes to a diamond. Cut, clarity, color, carrot, for example, certifies that authenticity. authenticity. But it's, it's a lot tougher when we think about what it means to be an authentic leader in an organization. I mean, this topic has been discussed for thousands and thousands of years. Uh, Aristotle, Latsu, uh, Camus, uh, Mother Teresa, um, the Dalai Lama have discussed this idea of knowing yourself and really understanding your authentic being so then you can go out in the world and truly serve them in the most powerful of ways. Uh, Aristotle, for example, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. So at the very heart of becoming authentic, it's about knowing yourself. Latsu has written, knowing others is intelligence, knowing yourself is true wisdom, mastering others is strength, mastering yourself is true power. And that's what we're hoping to achieve when we think about what it means to be an authentic leader in the workplace. Albert Camus, the uh, great writer and Nobel winner for literature, uh, he, he said by 30 years old, we should know ourselves like the palm of our hand, know the exact number of defects and qualities, and know how far we can go, foretell our failures, and be what we are, really, truly, and above all, in addition to understanding who we are, be able to accept these things, accept our strengths and accept our shortcomings. And so many times we are challenged by so many pressures around us, the way we are raised, the things that we have to face, the decisions we have to make in the workplace. Sometimes we're so accustomed to disguising ourselves for the sake of of who knows what, uh, that in the end we become disguised to, to ourselves and everyone else just because we repetitively are unclear about who we are and what we stand for. And so how can we become a more authentic leader? What are the things that we need to think about to begin that process? Well, we believe at Blue Point that for leaders, we can talk about authenticity and philosophize about it, but as far as leadership goes, it's all about action, absolutely action. So three of the core characteristics of authenticity in our belief is honesty, is one's values, and it's one's relationships. However, honesty, values, and relationships are great words, great words. But when they are put into action, honesty and action, is integrity. So when I experience an honest person modeling their honesty, whether or not they are likable or not, I can respect them and I believe they have integrity because they are honest to themselves and therefore honest to the world. And real authentic leaders are, are leaders who really have a clear understanding of what their values are. And when they put those values into action, then they are undeniably passionate. They show up in a way that there is a fire in their belly and they will stand up for absolutely everything they believe in. And so it's important to really understand what your values are so that when you put them in action, you become alive. And that enables you to really stand up for your beliefs even when you're under pressure. And then we have a lot of relationships, but we believe that you've got to put those relationships into action. And once you put those into action, time over time over time, you will build strong connections, very strong connections that people will trust, depend on, and will sustain. And 
those deep connections really are based on the authenticity that you bring to that person that you're relating with. So at its core, authenticity is about putting honesty, values, and relationship into action. And as a result, we see a person with integrity, a passionate person, and a person who is connected deeply with the people around them. So this is the model in the nutshell that we believe can help you become a more authentic leader in the workplace. So let's talk about each one of these areas a little further. Integrity. Now there's a great story about integrity that started way, way back in uh, the Roman and Greek times with the, with the sculptors. Uh, Sincera, it, it, it's a, a um, word that's derived from, uh, uh, sincere is, is a word that's derived from uh, the Latin um, word sin and sera. So sin means without and sera means wax. And back in the day when the Romans and Greeks were, were um, sculpting the statues, there were dishonest sculptors. And they would cover their flaws with wax. And if there was a flaw in the marble, they would roll in the wax and they would sell it as if it were perfect without flaw. And there were also stone workers who would apply a coating of the shiny wax to a sculpture instead of taking the time to polish it. And then it would get hot and melt and all the cracks would start to show up. And so the sculptors who were the authentic, the genuine artists decided that they needed to put up a sign that made it very clear to their customers that they are without wax, sincera. And ever since the word sincere um, in English has represented that genuine, sincere aspect of self. And so the question becomes, what are you sincere about? What are you genuine about? What is it that really differentiates you as an authentic artist of your own life? Now there are a few things that can help you think about this. Another way to put it is when you think about what your high road is, what you would stand on the hill to die for, so to speak, what does that contain? Uh, think about your ethical boundaries or your principles as a, as a leader. And what are the important behaviors that you expect yourself to model and that you expect others to model? What are those things? Take a, a, a few minutes uh, after this webinar and really jot those down and think about the things that you really define as your boundaries, principles, and behaviors that you want to stand on. Another way to think about that is if, if someone in, on your team was going to be put in your doghouse, <laughs> what, what uh, boundaries and, and what principles would they have to actually uh, violate in order for you to really send them into the doghouse? That's another way to think about it. So what is your leadership high road? Unless you can really articulate that, when you're in the workplace, it will be a lot harder to stand up for what you believe. So get clear on, on what your personal high road is. And the second piece of, of the model talks about your passions. Now, passions really are those values in action. And so if you don't know what your values are, if you don't know the things that make you tick, the things that drive your behavior, it's time to really find out. And so uh, when you ask yourself uh, about passion, uh, um, People can come to mind, uh, for example, someone who comes to mind for me always is Steve Jobs. Now in 2006, for example, uh, NBC interviewed Steve Jobs and they were talking about what makes him tick. And Steve was saying that his values are around knowing what's next. He has a value around knowing what's next. And that value of knowing what's next drives him, drives him to discover what the customer wants. And he has a passion, passion for innovation and a passion for turning that into innovation into action so that he makes a dent in the universe. And he's passionate about that innovation and puts it into action. So what is it that you're passionate about? What is it that makes you tick? 
I'd like you to take a minute, simply watch uh, the words that are f going to flash in front of you. And if you have a piece of paper or pen in front of you, why don't you start jotting down what are the core values that when you put them in action, you show up passionately in work. Take a minute to take a look at these few words and jot your own down. Get clarity around your own passions. So what are your values? What are the things that drive you in a passionate way at work? And how are you bringing them into the workplace? And how can people witness in you the authenticity around what is important to you? That's the idea around passions. So we've talked about two things. One is integrity and how you show up in the workplace around your honest self. And two is passions. And the third is really talking about, uh, uh, really talking about the connections that you make, deep connections that you make in the workplace, the relationships in action. Now, when you think about connections, uh, sometimes we can think superficially that it's, it's connecting a, a cable, uh, but when we talk about connections, we're actually talking about deep, deep, sustainable, long-term networks that people can depend on over a long period of time. And unless you can make those relationships strong connections, it will be very difficult for people to understand who you are. It'll be more challenging for people to understand what your intentions are. So you're the one who needs to make those deeper connections and really reach out and make an effort to show up, to share who you are authentically. And we like to uh, share this exercise to, to start the process for you to practice making deeper connections by getting really honest and authentic around the relationships at work. If you can map for yourself on a piece of paper, use this guide in front of you to ask yourself who are six people in your environment at work that you really want or need to make a deep connection with and become more authentic with. And write down those names. Imagine that you are in the center of this and write down a name per box. Maybe it's a group of people, maybe it's a person. But you're clear that you need to make a deeper connection with these people. And on the left side you see there on your screen, there's a, a legend. Now I'd like you to map from the middle of where you stand to each of these people or groups of people. Uh, draw a line indicating the uh, level of connection that you believe you have with each of those people or groups. So if it's a strong connection, draw a very thick line. If it's an erratic connection, draw a squiggly line. If it's uncertain, draw, uh, write some question marks. Just so you have an idea and, and becoming very self-aware of the people around you that you want or need to make deeper connections with. You want to show up more authentically with and have the courage to be more authentic and uh, uh, more honest with. Think about that for just a minute and write that down. Now it's not only it's not always easy to uh, uh, identify and then follow up with 
communication and connection authentically. And so we believe it's important to give you a model that will help you have those conversations in a very effective way so that you can approach these people or groups of people uh, in an effective skillful manner and so we have this model uh, that we'd like to share with you and it is a four-step model and I'd like to encourage you to commit to using this model and practice using this model on those particular people you just identified this will help you to create that stronger connection with them and thus you will have a deeper, more authentic relationship with them. So first, uh, uh, this might feel a little counterintuitive, uh, and, and it's meant to. <laughs> and so instead of approaching people by asking them for what you need or telling them what you need to get done around the workplace, approach them with this model, which is much more of a inquiry and a curiosity model. First, honor and acknowledge that person. Uh, whether you know them well or whether you are just getting to know them, there's going to be something that you can honor and acknowledge in them. And so acknowledge and honor something very unique and interesting about this person. Now this doesn't have to be a linear process, but you can, you can use um, it so. Uh, however, try to just cover these four areas. So acknowledging something and honoring something unique about them and if you're at a higher rank or if you're at a lower rank, th this idea of disclosing something about yourself can really put uh, you in a peer-to-peer -peer situation with whomever you're communicating with. So disclose and reduce your rank by becoming vulnerable and take a risk uh, by exposing something about yourself that really um, um, is in an indicator of your own humanity, that we are really all all people and who is it that you want to share uh, uh, your honest self with it with and who is that person and what is it about them um, that you're curious about learn something about them discover something about this person what is most imp the important thing uh, there is to know about them ask them some questions and then find out how you can help them how can you serve this person now and into the future versus you directing them or versus you um, asking something from them? So if you can practice this for these four steps in relationship to those six people or groups that you just identified, we believe this could be a great tool for you to be become more authentic in the workplace. Now, those are our, that's our, our primary model integrity, passion, and connection. That's our primary model. Now there's other tips that we'd like to share with you that may help you as well. Um, under pressure in the workplace, uh, it can be pretty difficult to, to sustain and uphold our true authentic selves. Um, sometimes it can be as simple as under pressure, removing yourself from the group so that you can reconfirm who you really are and what you do stand for. And then return. So for example, I know one leader who's a vice president of a, of a multi-billion dollar company who uses the trick, um, I need to go get a glass of water, excuse me, I'll just be a minute. Or I need to use the restroom, excuse me, I'll just be a minute. And he excuses himself just long enough so that he can go down the hallway and regroup and reconfirm with himself what it is that he believes and how he needs to go re-enter that room and make the right choice for himself. And the, um, some other tips are uh, getting on the balcony. Um, this, the balcony perspective is similar to what I just described, but sometimes you can't get out of a room physically. Uh, this, this perception, this um, um, metaphor of getting up on the balcony in order to remove yourself from the conversation. So if you can think of yourself as a dancer on the dance floor at a board meeting, for example, uh, that, that's sometimes difficult to separate yourself from the dance. And so if you can imagine in those moments under pressure, uh, before you have to make a difficult decision and you're not sure which way to, to lean, think of yourself on the dance floor watching the dancers and ask yourself, okay, from this perspective, what's the best choice for me? 
and how can I stand up for what I believe is my authentic perspective. Also, slow down the conversation that's going on to really hear what's being said. Perhaps you can paraphrase. Make sure you are checking for understanding before people are making decisions. Make sure you really understand what you're saying and that other people are also understanding you before you make those commitments. And also, commitment is important. So one of the quickest ways to lose trust, one of the quickest ways to uh, lose uh, faith from others is to never discern or commit. So once you understand your values, once you understand uh, the um, uh, high road, the boundaries and principles, and you start to live them out, uh, it is important to stand by them, to discern and commit to them. So those are the, the primary tips that we have to offer you, and we hope that between the model and these tips, you have some food for thought and you have a greater understanding of what it means to be authentic in the, the workplace, and that you can really apply this model and these tips to your life today. So if there's any questions, uh, we would be happy to answer them. I think um, Julie will be fielding them. Hi, and thank you so much for that. I do have a couple of sure. questions, and it would be great if we could we could take uh, a couple of these questions. Um, our first um, question is um, whether or not you have any examples, Anne, of leaders who have remained true to their authentic self under pressure. Can you give us any like practical real life examples? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I gave you one about the VP around uh, removing himself from the room. Um, so that's that's a, a good tip is to to literally when you start to to feel unsure, uh, sometimes you can feel it in your body. That's an important indicator. Uh, you, your body starts to shake or you start to feel tense. Uh, that's an indicator of maybe needing to execute on one of the tips. A couple other examples is um, a vice president of a, a food company um, was very, very liked and admired by his team and had a lot of trust built in it because he had clear boundaries. Um, and uh, he was so admired and trusted that he re started to receive phone, call uh, phone calls on the weekend. And he finally um, had to say to his managers, I do not receive calls on the weekend. I have a close relationship to you, but never, ever call me on the weekends unless it is absolutely clear in your mind that I am not um, uh, the... I, I am the only, sorry, I'm the only one can, that can actually solve your problem. And so th this, that's a minor example, but it has major impact on an environment when a leader makes it very clear that weekends and home phone calls are off limits. And uh, it is very difficult to do in this day and age with all of our um, Palm Pilots and our technology that keeps us connected 24-7. Then there's another example of a woman who was the chairman of a board, and uh, she, as the chairman of the board, had the pr uh, uh, pressure of leading a um, majority-driven organization. Uh, however, she had her own voice, and so she would literally, during meetings, have to say and articulate, as silly as it sounds, uh, it worked very effectively, she would have to put on her own hat and her uh, um, chair chairperson of the board hat. And she would say, right now I am speaking as the chairperson of the board, and right now I am, and then she would switch and she said, right now I am voting as um, uh, an individual who believes we should go in each uh, certain direction. So she was able to use a technique of actually wearing various hats as she needed to, and, and articulating that, and it worked smashingly for people. Uh, so there are very variations of these tips that I think are very effective. Uh, those are, are a couple examples. 
Thanks, Anne. That's great. Um, it's great to hear like the practical examples of, of people and how they've chosen to be authentic in the workplace. Um, I do have one other question here. I have um, someone who has um, a bit of a, a challenge and a bit of a problem. They feel they've been authentic with um, a, a particular colleague um, and, uh, and have really worked hard to be authentic, but they mm. feel that their colleague has continued to wear a mask. Any advice mm. for someone who uh, is approaching that situation? Uh, well, that's great. Uh, that's a great question. It's a tough situation if we believe that we're being authentic and someone else um, that we're con trying to connect with is not. Uh, we will never be able to change anyone. Um, I think that is a tough, tough reality to face as adults. Uh, we will never be able to change anyone. Uh, we will be able to influence them, and that's the best we can do. And and as long as uh, I or that person who is trying to be authentic, uh, then that's the best we can do. Um, however, I wonder, uh, I, thinking about the question, I wonder if um, the person asking the question has actually had that conversation with, with the other person about wearing a mask. So for example, have you had the courage? I would encourage anyone to confront and assert themselves in a conversation effectively and skillfully by all means to that person and, and share with them that um, the experience they're having is that each time they encounter them, they feel like or think that um, there is a, a mask being worn and um, uh, that that is their opinion and what does that other person think of their opinion and and have that courageous conversation with them and I and that's really when it's um, tough to be authentic is when really confronting with the deepest of our own feelings and deepest of our own thoughts and own them for ourselves versus uh, assuming that it's actually true for the other. I don't know if that person knows if they're authentic or not. Maybe that person believes they are being authentic. Um, it, it's, it's tough to say. But what we do have control over is we have control over having the authentic conversation and describing our thoughts, feelings, and our observations and our wants. and if uh, that doesn't make change, then we've done the best we can. But that's the difficult, authentic conversation to have. Thanks, Anne. That's great advice. Um, so we wanted to, I just want to thank you, Anne, for your time. This is wonderful. Um, great tips. Sure. Uh, wonderful to talk about. It's a, a really important subject. Um, and I also wanted to thank everyone else who participated on the call today. We're so glad that you could join us, and we hope this session was helpful for you. We encourage you to visit our website at bluepointleadership.com. And um, in the meantime, if you have any other questions about what it means to be on a be an authentic leader. We invite you to uh, email Anne or I. Um, and, uh, and again, we thank you for uh, being a part of the webinar today. Take care.